Hello everyone. Welcome to the NPTEL on Nonlinear and Adaptive Control. I am Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control IIT. So in nonlinear adaptive control, we are essentially talking about a sub-area of nonlinear control, which has gained a lot of popularity in real applications such as uh, fighter planes, satellites, drones, and deep neural networks. So um, we want to understand what is it that is uh, sort of uh, being done in adaptive control, which is uh, different from conventional nonlinear control. So if you look at a standard block diagram for an adaptive controller, what you find is that you have plant dynamics, which um, consist of uncertainties in the form of terms such as lambdas and mu, and these are characterized by uncertain parameters. Now, uh, in a conventional nonlinear controller, you would um, ignore these parameters or you would not be able to do any particular design uh, against uh, these parameters. But in an adaptive controller, you add a parameter identifier block, which helps you to um, add a, a sort of uh, robustness, but not just robustness. Uh, it allows you to achieve tracking in the presence of these uh, uncertain parameters also yeah and essentially we are able to achieve precise tracking uh, using such uh, parameter identifier based adaptive controllers so why do we want to have these parameter identifiers or why do we have such uncertainties uh, one of the first reasons is because of uh, modeling issues so typically you have a rather complex real world system like what you see here in this picture but uh, we simplify the model so that we can actually make the control and the design problem tractable and uh, now in order to do these we have to make certain approximations which leads to uncertainties and unknowns in the system in the form of parameters the next sort of um, uncertainty comes from uh, the deployment of the system which is uh, when you uh, actually start using the system or operating the system there may be sensors which are trying to measure certain variables and there may be errors in these variables and in order to compensate for these errors also you need some kind of a special control algorithm which is where the adaptive control comes in now uh, another kind of operational variation is because of um, you know incidents or accidents uh, for example if a drone is flying and it, it meets with an accident which doesn't completely damage it but uh, say for example damages its propellers like you can see here and this results in a shape change which uh, of course leads to changes in the parameters of the system and these new parameters are unknown to the um, you know the ground station that is actually flying this or operating this machine so what adaptive control does is provide as a means of actually compensating for these shape changes also. If you're using a very traditional fixed um, gain controller, then uh, one would require very, very uh, conservative uh, and uh, gains in order to uh, provide robustness to the system uh, to these sort of errors, which uh, are typically characterized as disturbances. But certain errors, especially measurement errors are not disturbances and they even scale with the control magnitude and therefore adaptive control does not um, actually just uh, give robustness but it attempts to identify these parameters also in addition to giving and or recovering ideal performance and this is why uh, adaptive controllers have been one of the most popular uh, real uh, applied controllers in the industry. In fact, for fighter jets, uh, there has already been implementations of adaptive controllers. And most of us already know about deep learning neural networks, which is uh, basically an adaptive controller, which is trying to learn uh, functions using training data. So I hope that this journey on adaptive controller with me will be an exciting one. 
and we will actually see how to uh, get from theory to application of adaptive control to real world. Thank you.